Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will continue with Salesforce Developer Interview Question and Answer Series. Okay, today we will discuss part 11 video where I will be discussing Batch Apex continuation. Okay, in the last video, we have discussed Batch Apex and in the in this video also, we will continue to discuss Batch Apex. Okay, uh, it is again the continuation video. If you have not watched the previous videos of this series, then I strongly recommend you to watch those videos first. So let's get started. Again, a synchronous Apex series. And in that we will, we are learning, we are continuing the batch Apex. Okay. So the very first question uh, for today's video is what is the maximum and minimum size of the optional parameter score, right? So in the last video, the last question, I have shown you how to call the uh, batch apex or invoke the batch apex and there we have also seen we can add an additional parameter called scope right so there i can give the value number like you know what should be the scope of the parameter okay so the scope parameter can accept a maximum value of 2000 right so maximum value of 2000 we can give we cannot give 2001 or anything more than 2000 we cannot give in the scope so the batch can divide the uh, number of records by 2000 max okay example again simple example if i have 10000 records and i have passed scope as 2000 then it will divide the 10000 by 2000 which is 5 so it will make 5 patches okay cool now Salesforce chunks the records returned by query locator into small batches of up to 2000 records. Same meaning what I've explained just now. So if the start method of the batch class returns an iterable, the scope parameters uh, values have no upper limit. Okay, because iterable is a little bit different. So for, for iterable, there is no upper limit. The optional, uh, the optimal scope size uh, is a factor of 2000. For example, 100, 200, 400, you cannot give 150, okay? So you have to give uh, in the multiples of hundreds, okay? Like 100, 200, 400, 500, okay? And so on, okay? The minimum size of the scope parameter is one. We can give just one as the minimum, okay? Next, what is the batch size if we don't use the optional scope parameter? So let's suppose I have not given the optional parameters. So what Salesforce will do by default, okay? So the default batch size is 200 records. So what it will do if I give, uh, let's suppose 10,000 records, then it will divide by 200, okay? Which will create so many batches, okay? So it depends what, what do you want. If you want to run by default, just run it. And if you want to add scope with 2000 or 1000 records per batch, then you can do that also, okay? There is no right or wrong thing over here. Next question is, do the batch of records execute in the order they are received from the start method? I think we have discussed this in the previous video also. The answer is no. The batches of records are not guaranteed to execute in the order they are received from the start method. Okay, so your your logic in the execute method should not or should never be uh, depending on the sequence. Okay, you should never never write uh, logic. You know, thinking that you will receive the records in a sequence. Okay, which I have explained to you in the previous video as well. So the next question is what is database dot batchable context? Okay, in the sample exam, in the sample program, I have, uh, you have seen, okay, we have seen together that there is in the three methods also I've used database dot batchable context, but I have not explained you there, okay? So now is the time to understand what is database dot batchable context. All methods start, execute and finish methods in the batch apex class requires a reference or parameters to the database dot batchable context. Okay, so that is compulsory. You have to give batchable dot database dot batchable context. Why? We'll see that. Okay, database dot batchable context object is used to track the progress of the batch job. Okay. So it have all the tracking information that variable, I think we have given 
database dot variable context bc in that bc variable you will have all the tracking information of the batch okay so get job id is the instance method with database dot batchable context object so we can utilize this uh, get job id and get the uh, details of the job and the tracking information okay so we can use the get job id and query async job object so this is the uh, i would say i have i've already explained this is again a system object okay you can query this object and get the information as soon as the batch runs you know it it creates a record into this uh, object and using this get job id you can query this to get the status of the batch job okay cool next question can we query related records or child records using database dot query locator okay let's see yes we can perform subquery to get the related records but with the subquery the bad job processing will be slower okay so even though we can do it but i would say avoid it okay avoid it means what if i want to use subquery then what what should we do let's see that so it is recommended to perform the subquery separately from within the query method which allows the bad job to run faster okay so write a separate query for for the for the other object okay instead of uh, you know writing a sub query uh, in a single query okay so that will increase the job i mean it will run the job faster than the sub query cool next one is can we use for update in a socl using database dot query locator i don't know how many of you remember this for update okay in this in in one of the videos i think uh, that video is more of uh, Sockel queries video, okay, I believe. So there I have explained you what is for update, okay. If you forget, don't forget, okay. You have to be on top of every question when you are preparing for Salesforce interviews or not, not just Salesforce, but any, any subject interview questions, right. So these are the questions, you know, people tend to miss, okay and the interviewers will take advantage of this and then they you know they try to ask such questions okay so let's see what is uh, can we use for update in a socle using database dot query locator means when i'm writing a query in the query locator in a batch apex can i use this for update let's see okay no we cannot use for update in socle using database dot query locator even before I move forward, I will I'll tell you that for update is used to lock the records. Okay. For example, I'm processing something on the record. And if I write for update, I will, I'm locking the, those records until my transaction is completed so that no other, uh, uh, no other, uh, uh, I would say thread or, you know, instance should update my records, which I am currently updating. Okay. So we cannot use for update in Sockle using database dot query locator as it will throw an exception locking is implied for each batch execution and therefore for update should not be specified. We cannot use. So the reason we cannot use it is if we query the entire object like all accounts using select and for update, then we will lock all the account records as long as the batch is active, right? So this is very dangerous thing that is the reason Salesforce itself is not allowing you you're locking the whole account records of the org and then P no one could update that okay everyone will get some error if Salesforce would have allowed you to do the locking okay that is the reason Salesforce itself is not allowing you to do okay this is also a tricky question where you know interviewer try to ask this question okay next question what is the state state not status okay state in the batch apex or what is the database dot stateful interviewer can ask anything okay to confuse you he will ask what is state in batch apex or uh, then you immediately start telling about status okay or they will ask what is the database dot stateful okay let's see each execution of batch apex is considered as discrete transaction discrete transaction means a separate transaction there is no connecti connectivity between those two transactions for example as i said a smaller example of 10000 records i'm running in a batch apex and i have divided each batch with 2000 records means first 2000 
does not have any connectivity with the second 2000 records means they don't have any information i mean for second will not have any information whatsoever from the first batch first uh, batch of uh, 2000 records and third batch doesn't have any information whatsoever from the second and first batch okay so these are discrete by default they are discrete okay so for example a batch apex job that contains thousand records and is executed without the option optional parameters is considered file transaction of 2000 records okay and if you specify data, data database dot stateful in the class definition we can maintain the state across the transactions okay so if i use database dot stateful then second my second batch will still have the information from first batch and my third batch will still have information from the second and first okay so what is that information how to maintain that information we'll, we'll see in a in a moment but just understand that stateful is to have some information from the previous batches or all batches will have each other's information what information how information forget about it for now okay let's think that database dot stateful is to maintain the state okay maintain the connectivity between the between the between the batches okay cool so when using database dot stateful only instance member variable retain their values between transaction static member variable don't retain their values and are reset between the transaction even before i explain you this you should know what is instance and static if you don't know research it okay i'll tell you also but do a little bit more research instance variables are something you know we just declare in uh, integer i okay so without adding static keyword if i declare anything which will be an instance so okay uh that is instance and if i if i specify static in front of it then that is nothing but a static but go and research a little bit more on instance and static this is very very basic of 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 an object oriented programming okay you should know this if you don't know go back and just understand what is instance and static and then come back and then continue from here okay so what will happen if i declare an instance variable then it will retain their values between the transaction if it is a static member variable then it will not retain their values and are reset between the transaction for example if i declare integer i then in the first batch i i have assigned integer i is equals to 10 somehow you know i value is 10 so that i value is 10 can be retrieved from the second batch so second batch knows that you know in the first batch a uh, value of i is equals to 10 now i have updated the value of i to 20 so now the third batch will know that i value is 20 okay but if i declare it as state static integer i then it will reset between each transaction. it cannot maintain the state state okay so to maintain the state 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 of a batch it should be you should declare the database dot stateful as well as you should store that value whatever the value you want to you want to maintain between the all batch transactions uh, into a instance variable you will now think okay why do i uh, maintain what is the need to maintain the instance variable right so let's see so can you give an example of maintaining the state of a batch apex so we can maintain the state of the batch apex for counting or summarizing records as they processed okay for example suppose our job processed opportunity records we could define a method in execute to aggregate totals of the opportunity amounts as they were processed for example let me elaborate this example i am running a batch of 10000 opportunities okay so every batch is running 2000 opportunities so what i can do is i will calculate the total amount of my 2000 opportunities and i will store it into some something called as sum or maybe count okay let's suppose total amount i'm using an instance variable 
integer and then I'm storing the total amount into that value. Let's suppose the first batch total amount is $1 million. Okay. Now, if I go to the next, if the batch goes to the next batch, right, if, if it executes the next batch of 2000 records, it knows that, okay, total amounts in the first batch is 2000, uh, 1 million. So now whatever the total amount in the second batch can be sum up to that 1 million. Okay. So let's suppose second batch is run and now second batch total is 1.5 million. So I can sum the first million and second 1.5 million. So total is 2.5 million. Likewise, I execute all the 10 batches and I summarize all those values to the end. So the finally, maybe all the total opportunities, total amount becomes 100 million. Okay. So what I can do is in the finish method, I can send it to whatever the administrator or the who is the concerned person saying that the opportunity batch has been completely uh, completed successfully and the total amount for all the opportunities is equals to 100 million. Okay. So that is the reason, you know, we can use the state of a job. Stateful. Cool. What will happen if you don't use database.stateful? Simple, nothing. All static and instance variable are set back to their original values or all the va variables are reset for each transactions of the batch. Okay. It's, it's a default phenomenon. So can you write a sample batch apex with the database.stateful? This is what, okay. Just go see it in detail. Okay. Don't get panic if you see a lot of code over here. First, uh, understand that, you know, whatever you know for the batch, you know that to write a batch apex, you have to write public class, the name of the class and implements database.batchable. Till here, it is common, common for any batch class. If you want to make a database.stateful, you have to write one more uh, interface called database.stateful. Cool. That's it. Make it very simple. Don't make it complex. Then you also know that there are three methods. One method, start method. Second method, execute method. Third method, finish method. Okay. So here you are writing database.query locator. It doesn't, it might not have query, but this is just a sample program. So I have declared two instance variable. One is query and one is integer. I, I'm, I'm more focused on this summary. Okay. So in the execute method, I am adding that summary and I'm using it, you know, in all my batches. So and finally, when I finish this batch, summary will have all the total amount. Okay. So like this is how we can write the batch apex with database.stateful. Cool. Can we call out in the batch apex? What do you mean by call out? Callout is, you know, integration, like you can integration callout. Can you uh, call out to another system from the batch apex? You know, right? You can do a callout from a regular apex. Okay. And um, let's see. Yes, we can call out in the batch apex as well. To use callout in the batch apex, we have to specify database.callouts in the class definition. Okay. You have to again implement another interface called database.callouts. Public class search and replace implements database.batchable and then database.allow callouts. If you write allow callouts, okay, here it's a different, but I think allow callouts is the right thing. Database.allow callouts, then you will be able to call out to a different system from Salesforce, okay? So that's it for today uh, in this video. And again, as I said, I am always referring to help.salesforce.com you can go back and refer to help.salesforce.com for the latest uh, uh, latest and greatest updates from salesforce uh, thank you very much thanks for watching i hope uh, this video help you prepare for your salesforce developer interview and crack your next job thank you very much